Hello, hello. I am waiting now. We're going to start our conversation soon. So let's see if I can get my friend Laura Gutierrez here. Um, okay. I already send, uh, send you an invitation, Laura. Can you check? Add, yep. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We I'm made it, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> My computer, can you believe it's still working out and seeing if it wants to work or not today? Uh -huh. <laughs> Not today. Well, you know, maybe, maybe need some makeover. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, sometimes it happens oh, like okay. this. You just follow the, follow the, the flow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So I will introduce you and then we can uh, chat. Um, so this is my dear friend, Laura Gutierrez. She's uh, from Colombia. We'll talk about that later. And, uh, but she lives in Sydney, uh, Australia. And she's the founder of uh, the Love Approach Project. And she's also an energy healer and a health coach. And uh, she aims to bring people harmony into their lives through coaching and vibrational healing sounds and all that. So I will start with the first question. Lovely. Hello, Adrian. Look, we have Adrian here. Oh, hi, Adrian. So the first, my first question for you, to, uh, for you, uh, Laura. Uh, talk to me, talk to us a little bit about sound healing because, you know, that's something that is going around now, but probably we don't have really like um, an explanation of what really sound healing is. <laughs> yes. Well, sound healing is very interesting. Well, actually all of what we could consider vibrational healing is very interesting. And sound healing is part of, you know, the big umbrella of vibrational healing. So with sound, we're working with frequency, basically. And the thing is that with sound, so the human being has um, an auditory range that more or less goes from 16 hertz to about 16,000 hertz or sometimes even 20,000 hertz. So that's what we can hear, right? But, you know, when you play an instrument, there are many of those frequencies that you cannot hear, but all of your being perceives them. Hmm? So sound, it's an energy that travels through waves. You know, and, and they affect us in many different ways. So they affect our physical body, our etheric body, our, you know, all our energy centers, all our energy bodies, basically. And most of that, we don't even notice, you know, notice, I mean, in terms of we don't see it, we might not hear it, we might not smell it, but it's working with us. Now, sound also travels really well through water. And we are about at 75, 80% water. So imagine that. Now, one of the things that I really like about sound healing is that there are, there are two concepts actually, or two main terms that we use in sound healing. And one of them is resonance and the other one is entrainment. So with resonance, okay. so resonance is um, what we would call, it's sometimes it's called free resonance or natural resonance, which is the natural frequency of something. Of, of a thing, of a cell, of an organ, of a person, of an animal, right? So it's that natural frequency. And um, that natural frequency, let's say, vibrates or resonates <clears throat> with frequencies that match it. Hmm? So, yeah, right? So let's say we are, um, let's say we're looking for to raise our frequency let's say we're looking to feel better to feel more to feel happier or more uplifted or something so that frequency it's already within us you know we are already yeah. that within 
So when we bring higher frequencies, like let's say the frequencies of the Tibetan singing bowls or the crystal bowls or all the stuff like that, then what happens is that it, let's say, awakens that natural frequency within us and resonates with it. And in a way, it activates it. So that's one thing. So that's resonance. When actually there's an example that I yeah. can give that's perhaps a lot clearer. So when you have a tuning fork, I don't know if you've seen a tuning fork. Yeah. Yeah. So for, yeah. for those for, for those people who haven't seen a tuning fork, they're like a, like a fork, like two two sticks like this. They're usually made of steel, and they have like a little holding stick. <laughs> And they are um, attuned to different frequencies. So let's say you have a tuning fork attuned to a particular frequency, let's say uh, 100 hertz, um, as an example. If you have another one that is attuned to the same frequency, hmm, and you have them like this, and you play one of them, the other one will start vibrating as well, without having to play the other one. Wow. That's resonance. Wow. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, having, yeah, yeah. So it's like a like a ripple effect. Yes. And so what I when I started okay. doing sound healing, what I noticed is that you know within us we already have the frequency of unconditional love, the frequency of joy, the frequency of health, the frequency of abundance, of prosperity, of beauty, of grace. All of those frequencies are already within us. You know, we we are born with wow. them. So the role of the healer in this case, this is what I've noticed, is to bring frequencies that help people remember that, you know, that start resonating. Exactly. Right? So exactly. that is one of the terms, resonance. Now, the other one that is really important um, in sound healing is entrainment. And so entrainment, okay. um, I don't know, uh, Vero, if you have heard about the experiment of the... What's the name of these clocks? You know, the big clocks that have the big pendulum. You know, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're called the grandfather clocks or something like that. Yeah, no, no, I, I haven't heard about it. This happened, yeah. I think it was in the 17th century or something like that. So the, the creator of these clocks uh, had a room full of clocks and um, they all had, they, they were small, big, you know, all, all sizes. And he left them in a room and he basically started one of them. Uh, but they were all, sorry, they were all started. So they were all moving at different re uh, paces, basically. And then when he came back into the room a couple of hours later, all the clocks were entrained to the pulsation of the bigger one. Okay. All of them, yeah. Right? So that's entrainment. Yeah. So what happens with entrainment, and this is something that I actually have noticed as in my practice right this is something that i've noticed and is that when um someone is let's say unwell or it's feeling down or something and you bring a frequency that is higher that frequency and trains kind of like brings up the other frequencies to match it hmm? And again, that's, yeah. that's what happens with sound healing as well. But I've noticed that also with crystals, because crystals are also frequency, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With hands-on healing. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah, but yeah, it's very interesting what you're saying, because it reminds me of the um, a critical mass concept. Yeah? So it's, it's like acting in the same way. And um, it's amazing. And the other thing is that you mix that because I have been in your uh, workshops. Your workshops are amazing. And I have been, uh, when you are doing the sound healing, yeah, the sound of the things, but you also use voice. Yes. Uh, and why is that? Why is that? Tell me why you use voice in conjunction with, uh, with the sound, right? With instruments, right? So, well, at the end of the day, your yeah. voice is your natural instrument. Mm -hmm. Now, exactly. this is yeah. very interesting because I, I am not a singer and I never thought I could sing or anything like that, really. But when I started doing healing, I started to notice that sound was flowing through me. You know, there was, there was nothing that I could do about it. It just was happening. And the other thing that I noticed is that depending on what the client was going through, depending on what um let's say that person needed 
different frequencies were coming out, were being expressed. And then I realized, oh my goodness, this is just, I'm just being an instrument that is being, you know, resonated to a particular frequency to support this other person or the group. So okay. this is why I bring voice and I call it inspired sound because it's a sound that I feel that it comes from a very high frequency to support people, to you know, help people elevate their frequency. Yeah, that's amazing, amazing. Yeah, um, and what about um, you? There's something that caught my attention here is intuitive healing and Reiki, yeah? So is this together or it's separate practices? Well, so what is intuitive healing? Yeah, so this is very interesting. So when I started with healing, I started with Reiki. That was my, the first modality that I learned. I, I learned Reiki when I was in Colombia and I did all my levels when I was in Colombia. And as I started to practice more and more, I noticed that there were other, let's say, skills or gifts that started to develop. No, I wasn't aware of that, but they just became like that. And one of those ones was my intuition. So when, when I was trained in Reiki, what I was taught was that, you know, to use my hands to perceive where the accumulation of toxins were, you know, or where things were not feeling great. So I was using my hands, but then as I, okay. as I was doing it more and more, I, my intuition just knew, I knew what was going on. I knew where the imbalance was and I just allow that intuition to That's guide amazing. me. And I would say also, you know, that it's not only intuition, you know, if, if when I'm doing my healing, I'm always connected. So, and we'll talk about that later, I assume, but um, I'm always connected. So I'm allowing that connection to guide me and show me what that person needs the most in that particular moment. So, Reiki can be done on its own, and that's you know the way that I learned. It's just Reiki hands on, right? You use symbols and a few other things. But in my particular case, as I have evolved as a healer and learned and developed my own gifts, I see everything as a conjunction of everything I've learned. That's what I do in my healing sessions. Wow, wow, that's that's really amazing, really amazing. Yeah, I remember being in in, in a few of yours, um, uh, your healing sessions, and the voice and and uh, the sound and all that is is just amazing. And let's talk about crystals because uh, crystals are. Um, one of my favorite things, really, <laughs> you know, I love crystals. Um, I have many. So yeah, that's, that's good. And what about crystals? What, why you can use crystals to heal? Because a lot of people say, think that this is like a maybe Google things, you know, like, a, mm, yeah, what a crystal can do, you know? Yes. Well, I always say, yeah. especially when I, when I'm doing my workshops, my crystal workshops, Crystals, like absolutely anything in creation, are frequency, right? Yeah. Crystals, yeah. crystals yeah. come from Mother Earth, and some of them come also from the combination of uh, meteorites or things that have fallen from the sky and have mixed with our mm -hmm. Earth, with Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. But if we think about it like that, if we think about them as pure frequency, and this is something that actually, I love a quote by Tesla, by Nikola Tesla, that says that if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you have to start basically thinking in terms of frequency, vibration, and I forgot the other word, right? right? And, so, yep. and so each yep. crystal has a particular vibration. Now, okay. we can also tell that by the colors that they have. So they now Oh, wow, that's interesting. They naturally have different colors. Let's say rose quartz, right? It has a frequency mm -hmm. of that color of the of pink, yeah. right? But it, and, and, it's a, and it's a crystal that actually works really well with our heart. You know, it's a crystal that keeps the yeah. heart. Yeah, because it's, it's uh, for me, always pink is the, is the frequency of love. And, and I always associate ro uh, rose quartz with uh, love, you know, with, with heart, like you say. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's a little bit, because everything is vibration, I'm thinking about the Bach flower system also, that some flowers have 
certain characteristics uh, and they are related to the healing they can provide. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's the same with crystals. And um, what, what uh, kind of crystals do you recommend, for example, for times like this one? Like crisis everywhere and people feeling, feeling you know, low and, and in lockdown. I yeah. mean, I, you know, I have been in, I moved uh, from um, Australia to the UK in February mm -hmm. and in March lockdown happened yeah. and we have been nine months, nine months of the 12 months we have been here, nine months in lockdown for example you know so <laughs> you are lucky there in australia yes. so what yes we are <laughs> yeah you are lucky yeah so what 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 do you recommend like a little just a little tip well <laughs> the first thing that i would recommend actually is that if you are interested in starting to use crystals for your own well-being for your benefit is that if, go to a crystal shop if you can <laughs> and choose the crystal that first comes to you you know because that's that's again following that what we were talking before what we were talking about before that resonance you know when we are in tune with a frequency we resonate you know so follow that if there is a crystal that calls you follow that but now if we were to create like a first aid kit let's say to support us at home we i, I would suggest some of the staples which are you can find them absolutely everywhere it would be rose quartz for sure to support the heart you know, all, all your emotional, let's say, <clears throat> state and to help you feel centered in the heart, you know, loving towards okay. others and towards yourself. Another one would be okay, amethyst. And amethyst, I think we all know amethyst. It's that beautiful purple crystal that you find. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that you find everywhere as well. <clears throat> and amethyst is really good for um, calming the mind, clearing the mind. It's also very protective um, and it's very, you know, it also helps with detoxification. Even though this is, it sounds, this may sound funny, but actually in, in um, ancient Greek times, they used to make wine glasses out of amethyst so that people wouldn't get intoxicated when drinking wine. <laughs> so amethyst is really good. It's also really good for nightmares, for people who are suffering from nightmares okay or yeah that's an a property i didn't know about yes. yeah that's good interesting yes and yeah. really good for calming you before going to bed you know if you're having trouble sleeping or stuff like that amethyst would support you with that so i would actually say yeah. get a little piece that you can place here on your forehead or on your crown you know and allow yourself to relax with it you can accompany relax. that with, okay. with some breathing as well of course yeah Okay. Yes, cool. I, cool. I would say those ones, and then of course clear quartz, which again you can find everywhere. You know, it's, these are very easy to find crystals. And clear quartz, the beauty of clear quartz is that it's the master healer. You can use clear quartz for okay. everything, and it also potentiates or enhances the energy of any other crystal that you use with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was going to say like um, it's it's like a conductor of uh you know like it, it it acts like that exactly right so yeah it's good it's good yeah, yeah. thank you for those uh tips so it's rose quartz uh, amethyst and clear quartz. yes okay awesome awesome i i i love it <laughs> i really love it um it's really good so um then um i'm, I'm just reading here i'm just reading okay. here uh, you also uh, work with uh, meditation, right? You have a Facebook group yes. where you, you provide, um, um, I think it's a weekly meditation, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. So this started actually in March last year when we were all in lockdown. March last year. Yes. And I really felt, Good. you know, the need to, to be able to create a container to support people, you know, during, during that, those times. And, and I, what I found was that, it was so important to continue doing it and to keep bringing community together and people together and to yeah. allow people to have a, a, a space where they could find something that would help them find their center again, you know, and come back to their harmony. Yeah. So, yes, thank you, Benito. So the name of my Facebook group is Love in Times of Uncertainty. And yeah. perfect. Yes. <laughs> 
and I offer a weekly meditation on Monday mornings, but I always post the recording after. So you can do it whenever you want, basically. Yes. And beautiful. A, That's beautiful. That's very, very good. Yeah, thanks, Felipe. Thanks. Very good. Very good. Very good. And um, another question is like, I know you, you practice the pineal gland activation, the internal activation of the pineal gland, um, the Cyclopea method, that's the method yes. I teach. And um, I want to ask you uh, how this method has helped you in your practice and in your uh, daily life. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I loved it. To be honest, uh, that's been one of the courses that I can say I practice every day, you know? And um, I really, Good. What I found the most beautiful thing about the course is that actually the name of the course doesn't really say, doesn't really explain what, the, the, what it does for you. So for me, especially being a healer, it became a tool that helped me feel very, very connected to source, you know, especially before each one of the treatments that I provide, before I begin my day, that that the tool of the activation and the connection, because that's the, the part that you take with you after the, the course, then became this, um, like, how would you call that standing stone, or I don't know how to call this, like a, like a, a pillar, a pillar of my practice, basically. Yeah. And I love it because it's, it's all about being connected, connected to source and remembering that every single day. So to me and for me, it, it took my healing work to another level, I would say. And, really? and I love it. And, and you know, what, one of the things that I really like about it is that you can practice the short exercise that is less than a minute every single day or whenever you need it. And you're there, you're connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of the method, um, the Cyclopea methods. Thank you. Thank you about that. And I want to take you on to another, another place now. Sure. Uh, talk to me about um, about your roots, Colombia, and how being a, a Latin, um, working in Australia, living in Australia, living in a foreign country, how how that journey has uh, what has been for you in in reality, like yes. in your heart, in in everything, in everything you do. Yes, well, it's been great to be honest. I. I felt so welcome here in Australia. I and and I think that's why you know I really I really love this this country because I felt that I was received with open arms. You know I feel very fortunate because all the process to be able to be here for me and my husband was super smooth, easy. You know and and I never in my life thought I would be coming to live to Australia. <laughs> like me <laughs> i thought it would be like in london or you know somewhere in europe i never thought i would be in australia but um i love it i and you know i just have felt very welcomed in terms of my in terms of the diversity you know like in here you find people from absolutely everywhere around the world everywhere. and i, I yeah. love that i really really love that and even the people who have you know most of the let's say people who have been born here, most of the Australians, they all have ancestry from other places. And so there are so many roots. And of course, even though I haven't been able to spend time with um, the Aboriginal, the Aboriginals, do you say that, that in, in plural? Aboriginals? The Aboriginals. Um, I haven't been able to spend time with them or with, you know, learning about their culture and everything. I, I feel very connected to the land here as well. So yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, and yeah, I just, you know, yeah. gratitude. I just, I just have so much gratitude for this country, for this land, for the place that I live in, which is very close to one of the most beautiful beaches that I've ever seen, you know? So. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> I miss it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and the other thing, how, how do you, um, because I think that, us coming from Latin America, sometimes it could be hard for us to be heard and 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 show to um, 
other cultures that we also have something to say and, and we bring something to the table. Uh, how have you found that, uh, found that process? Like, uh, you know, for you, yeah. what do you think about that? Like, because, you know, taking, taking, taking our word and, and spread it. Yes. Well, to be honest, uh, I, I have found it very easy. I haven't found any struggles around that. And I have always felt very welcome. I have always felt Good. that people are, you know, curious also, you know, and, and I'm very open to share about where I come from and what I, you know, what I think and Good. what I do. And, and I think also it helps the fact that I'm married to an Irish man and, you know, that I, I guess that, um, how can I, how can I say this? I have only experienced love, to be honest. I have never experienced rejection because of, due to the fact that I come from South America or Colombia. In fact, it's been quite the opposite. Like, oh, you come from South America. Yeah. How beautiful, how exciting. That's great, yes, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. So That's I love it. I, I am yeah. so, so grateful for the opportunity of being here. That this is, this is very interesting. I actually feel perhaps more heard or more or free, freer <laughs> to express myself here than perhaps when I was back in Colombia. So, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I get what you mean. <laughs> I get what you mean, especially when we work with the spirituality and all that, and people think that, ah, oh, yeah, crazy, because we come from countries that are very Catholic exactly. countries and and they um it's it's not easy although they are more open now mm -hmm. but um open-minded now but still still is, is it could be a bit difficult yeah. so i'm so happy that you you came here uh to talk to me today and we learn about crystals and sound healing and all that um uh, tell me why when is your next workshop in in sydney or are you doing online things too well Okay, so in terms of live events here in Sydney, I am running my live events and I have always one um, Relax, Receive and Heal, which is like my signature event in which I mix crystals, sound, Reiki, my voice. That happens once a month on the last Wednesday of the month in Crowsness for the people who are living in Sydney. Um, yeah. So the next one is on the 24th, but that's sold out. So the following one would be at the end of March. Then I also run a simple Tibetan song healing in which I just use the, the Tibetan singing bowls and some mantra as well. And that happens on the third Thursday of the month here in Mosman in a place called okay. the Figure Chiropractic, which is beautiful, by the way. You've been to that one? <laughs> yeah, happy. happy yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then um, in terms of other workshops, I still do not have dates just yet, just to... I don't know, but I do have some online workshops already uh, going, like going on. And so if people go to my website, they can find them there. Okay, yes. great, great, excellent. And what's your website? It's theloveapproachproject.com. Yes. Okay, we'll put the link uh, in, in the comments anyway. Thank you. Anyways. I was also going to say that if people are on Instagram, then they can just go to the link, the link on the bio and they can find everything including the podcast in which i interviewed you as well <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> the cr cr cross uh, interviews, cross interviews you know? yes and i was also going to say that i am now on clubhouse like verito as well and yeah. hopefully well very soon we're going to be writing a few things together there together right 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 yeah in english and in spanish exactly. yes <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So Adrian can practice his Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> if you're learning Spanish, come and join us. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Very good. So uh, thank you, Laura, for everything. And um, yeah, so I will be here next week uh, with another uh, guest. And so, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I love our conversation. And yeah, let's keep Let's keep going. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vero, for this opportunity. Bye. Really enjoyed it. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.